React throws around a lot of fancy terms that can leave beginners scratching their heads. Terms like reconciliation, composition, and error boundaries. What do all these terms actually mean? Let's start from the beginning with components. Imagine Legos. React components are like those Legos, reusable building blocks that form the visible parts of your app like buttons, inputs, entire pages, you can create them all as components. These components are written in JavaScript using JSX, a special syntax that lets you write HTML-like structures within JavaScript. JSX is optional, but it's much easier to use than the alternative method of creating elements with React.createElement. JSX is not HTML. It's JavaScript, and that means you can't write attributes like you would in HTML. Instead, you need to use camel case style. For example, on change in HTML becomes on change in JSX. It's a small difference, but it's crucial to get it right. What's the benefit of using React? Well, it's all about dynamic JavaScript values. You can display data in your JSX using curly braces, and these curly braces accept values like strings and numbers directly. But that's not all. You can also use curly braces to make your attributes dynamic. And you can style React elements using a JavaScript object within those curly braces. How do I pass data into another component? That's where props come in. Props, short for properties, are a way to pass data into any components. They allow us to customize our components and make them dynamic. Props are like custom attributes you can add to any component. To create a prop, you simply create a name on the component you want to pass data to and set it equal to some value. Then, you can use that prop in the component you passed it to. But can you pass anything as a prop? Yes, you can. You can even pass other components as props using the children a prop. By enclosing components with opening and closing tags, you can place other components in between. These inserted components are referred to as children and can be accessed via the children prop of the parent component. It's an excellent technique for what we call composition, optimizing the organization of React components. The Keith prop is another built-in prop in React. Unlike its name implies, it doesn't unlock anything interesting. The keyed prop is used to differentiate one component from another. It's especially useful when creating lists with the map function. A key is a unique string or number that identifies a component. If you don't assign a unique value for each item, React will warn you in the console. You can use the current index from the map function as a key if you don't have a unique value for each item. Whenever someone uses our app, lots of events happen, like clicking, moving your mouse, and pressing keys. Event handling is how we take those user events and do something with them. React has many built-in events, like on-click, on-change, and on-submit, that make it easy to react to user input. These events are the ones you'll probably use the most. For example, if you want to show an alert when a button is clicked, you can add an on-click property to the button and link it to a function that displays the alert. That's all for this video. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future updates.